Uh, next, we have Fawn Sharp, president of the National Congress of American Indians. Chairman Schatz, Vice Chairman Murkowski, and members of the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs, on behalf of the National Congress of American Indians, I'd like to thank you for holding this hearing on the success of the 2013 Violence Against Women Act and the critical need to reauthorize VAWA with strong tribal provisions. My name is Fawn Sharp, Vice President of the Quinault Indian Nation and President of NCAI. We welcome the opportunity to work with the committee to pass bipartisan legislation that continues to build on VAWA's success and includes four priorities for VAWA reauthorization. Number one, amend 25 USC section 1304 to fill the current jurisdictional gaps. Number two, ensure and reaffirm that all 574 tribal nations can exercise criminal jurisdiction through VAWA. Number three, reauthorize VAWA's tribal grant programs and create a reimbursement program for exercising tribal nations. And fourth and finally, create a permanent authorization for the U.S. Department of Justice's tribal access to national crime information program. These four priorities build off of the 2013 VAWA reauthorization and further acknowledge the inherent tribal sovereignty and tribal jurisdiction to protect the safety and security of Indian country. In the eight years since Congress reauthorized VAWA, we have seen tribal nations combat domestic violence against Indian women while protecting non-Indian rights in an impartial tribal forum. By exercising our inherent sovereignty and jurisdiction, many tribal nations have increased safety and justice for victims who had previously seen little of either. Currently, 28 tribal nations are exercising VAWA's special domestic violence criminal jurisdiction, and in eight years, these nations have made 396 arrests, prosecuted 227 defendants, leading to 133 convictions. In 2016, the Department of Justice stated that these programs have allowed tribal nations to respond to longtime abusers who previously had evaded justice. It has also revealed places where the federal administrative policies, practices, resources, and tools needed to be strengthened to enhance justice for victims of sexual violence, children, elders, and law enforcement. Tribal nations report that children have been involved as victims or witnesses in nearly 60% of these cases. These children have been assaulted or have faced physical intimidation and threats, are living in fear and are at risk for developing school-related problems, medical illness, post-traumatic stress disorder, and other impairments. However, federal law currently limits these cases to crimes against intimate partners or persons covered by a qualifying protection order. This common scenario reported by tribal nations is that they are only able to charge a non-Indian for violence against the mother and can do absolutely nothing about violence committed against the children. Similarly, tribal nations lack jurisdiction to charge a non-Indian offender for crimes that may occur within the context of the criminal justice process itself, such as resisting arrest, assaulting an officer, witness tampering, or obstructing justice. Tribal nations are un also unable to prosecute crimes of a sexual assault, trafficking, and stalking. In addition to the gaps, not all 574 tribal nations were included in VAWA 2013. Tribal nations in Alaska and Maine must be expressly included in this next reauthorization to protect their citizens and communities. Before I conclude my testimony, I wanna share a case from the Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians that illustrates how tribal jurisdictional gaps have real consequences. In the case, a non-Indian man in a relationship with an Indian woman moved in with her and her 16-year-old daughter on the reservation. The man began making unwanted sexual advances toward the 16-year-old daughter and groped her. The tribal nation charged him with domestic abuse against the mother and attempted to tie the daughter's sexual assault to the mother's case. The tribal court had no choice but to dismiss the charges for lack of criminal jurisdiction. Uh, soon after, he kidnapped a 14-year-old Indian child, took her off the reservation, and repeatedly raped her. This horrific crime could have been prevented if the tribal nation had the ability to exercise criminal jurisdiction in the first place. 
removing the gaps in tribal jurisdiction and ensuring all 574 tribal nations can exercise jurisdiction and providing the resources and tools for implementation together can dramatically change the environment in Indian country by empowering tribal sovereignty and safety. Please join us in sending this message that domestic violence, sexual assault, child abuse, elder abuse, stalking and trafficking will not be tolerated on tribal lands. We look forward to working with each of you to pass a bipartisan VAWA bill that includes strong tribal provisions. Thank you very much. Uh,